starting stream. Everyone's Event ready. is starting. Well, your tablet, tablet doesn't work now. We are live, it's, good it, sirs. Of course, it's not working. <laughs> this is the mouse. Yeah, this is the mouse. Dude, mouse, style, mouse painting. What's yeah, up, everybody? Painting. What's up, Ethan? <laughs> Mache? Hey. What's up? How's it going? Thanks going for having great. me. Yeah, man. Always. Finally, actually. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're back. Um, the last one was with Kirill. And this one is with Almighty. Damn, son! <laughs> Aiden Zana. What's up, man? <laughs> How you been, man? We haven't we haven't spoke for a while, so. I know. Um, I mean, I'm you had interested. a you had a human child. Yes, I did. Oh my it, God, it's growing. It's uh, oh, it's no. getting bigger. It's almost walking, so. It's, um, <laughs> it's sick, man. It's like. It's like a totally new experience, I guess, but right. yeah, that's like a whole new subject or a different subject. I know you really liked, you know, clubbing and going out, so now that's <laughs> finally, finally had to stop doing that. Yeah, I'm like... You were I'm, so social before, so... Damn, dude, I was the <laughs> most social pe person of not hating anyone at all and just being all, all nice to everyone, so very polite. I remember being super polite person. <laughs> While working at Naughty Dog, so you well, know, that I think Polish, that, that Polish charm, that dude, very, so very friendly. soft voice, friendly. When you first yeah. started, oh my god, you were like, <laughs> you were like a cinder block, man. You just, <laughs> <laughs> you were just ruthless. Dude, you started, that. you started working, like, was it a week after? What, what was it? You started like a month before me or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, you you joined like a month later. It was only Shadi and Hyung and Andrew yeah. uh, in there. And Shadi was on the wheelchair because he right. blew up his ACL. Right, snowboarding or something. <laughs> he was actually playing like grass hockey or something. Wow. Yeah. Bullshit, man. Bullshit. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a, been a while. It's been a long ride. I remember you joining it. And uh, just like this young kid, super fucking talented, just blowing up, you know. But I, I like it's funny because like I think you joined right after uh, Otis, right? Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, I just like I could witness your whole journey from your, from college time to like now, when it's just like just everything is super juicy, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was a that was an interesting experience to see and I guess uh, just to sort of do our due diligence um, just if you could talk about a little bit about yourself I don't want to I don't want to talk about your career or anything I'd rather you do it so sure um, so my name is Eitan Zana I work at Naughty Dog as a environment concept artist I've been there for almost six years now painting all the pretty places all the cool stuff that they get to do um, that's about it. I mean, I uh, I went to Otis College and got an internship after school and started interning at Naughty Dog and like two or three months later they offered me a job. And then I got to I got to see your beautiful face every day. Mache. Did Mitch? Did we just lose Mitch? I think he. I think he was so taken aback by what he said. <laughs> um, you having a cry? Just a little cry. Who? Me? Wait. Yeah. We couldn't um, hear you for like two minutes. No, it, it, you're you're. My Skype kind of muted itself for a second, uh, <laughs> so I haven't heard half <laughs> of it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it was really boring. So okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I, I guess so. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know. so, um, so I have a question to you because um, you, you know, you were you were a rock star from the very beginning. That's not. I true. remember that. <laughs> and um, so I'm I'm curious, like, if at any point during your journey. From the moment you you started doing art, let's maybe start with that. When you started doing art, 
uh, what, did, did you have like a goal uh, in your head, like a, some some kind of uh, achievement that you wanted to get in your mind, or was it just following, you know, a passion to to art itself? You know, it it really evolved. If we're talking when I first started, mm -hmm. I didn't know that concept art was a thing. I just knew as a kid that I wanted to work in video games. Like I wanted to work on a video game, but I didn't know what you could possibly do. I thought it was like five guys that work on a video game and that was it. <laughs> so I was like, I want to be one of the guys and I'll do everything. Like I'll come up with, you know, half of the game on my own. Like I'm I'm so original as like a 12 year old. <laughs> like, oh, I could do that. <laughs> Uh, and then I, I did some research like I I just I think I googled like video game designer and then it it showed me Feng Zhu and Craig Mullins and I was like mm -hmm. oh I, I could be as good as that I was like yeah yeah okay <laughs> like, that's easy sure sure <laughs> I, there were like two artists in my high school so I was like I'm the second best artist here so yeah, it can't be any harder than that. Yeah, like, like I'll just work with them. Like, there's probably only, like, five people in the world who want to do that as a job. So I'll just join them. Super easy. Um, mm. But, you know, as it as I went through high school, it kind of evolved. And I was like, oh, okay, so I need to probably go to an art school because I have no idea what to do. Like, there was nothing. There were no, like, small schools back then. There were mm. only uh, – I went to a traditional – school during the summer of my last year in high school that was just kind of foundational stuff mm -hmm. just to get me into Otis and uh, yeah once I was there I sort of started learning more and more what went into it and I saw like oh cool like I started going on like conceptart.org and seeing all the artists there and I got really obsessed with you know wanting to be in the industry like I, I thought I was going to do characters actually Oh, okay. Just hilarious. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to design, like, I had the worst garbage, like, Final Fantasy crap portfolio, <laughs> like... In, in scale of, in scale of, from, from one to never, how much you want to do characters now? Oh, my God, like, <laughs> triple never. <laughs> it's a totally different beast, yeah, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's very different, but kind of halfway through art school, I, I took one environment class and I was like this is so cool like I started getting really into that and I, the character stuff just kind of dropped off and I didn't really mm. do that but I did like just the dumbest shit like chameleon men with swords and robes and beards <laughs> like just so like garbage but it sort of evolved and I, I started getting really into uh, like nature and traveling and stuff like that and I really liked I realized I like the worlds of video games more than the characters. Mm. Like that's what originally drew, drew me to all these things that I like. Like any of the IPs that I liked, it was always the sets that I thought were really cool when I thought about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then uh, then I played Uncharted 2 and I was like, this is the best game I've ever played. So I, was I guess like, everyone I, had that reaction. Yeah. <laughs> it's, such, it's such a good game. Yeah. It's I like, love it insane and I was like one day I'm gonna work for these guys <laughs> I, I bought the the Uncharted 2 art book and then it was like just pure happenstance that uh, our the art director from Naughty Dog knew our teacher and our teacher asked him to come in and look at our work and that's how I got the internship from mm. him looking at my work so it was like couldn't I just got it handed to me I'm such a butthole <laughs> 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 I, yeah I just uh you know, I tell, I tell the same advice to everybody. Like, I made my school portfolio just look like it could fit in at Naughty Dog, and that's why they liked it. It was I wasn't the best in school, but it just it was the most like directed portfolio towards their stuff. Right. Because I knew he was coming in, so I was like, all right, I have like three months to get this cool like portfolio going and really make a good impression on him. And it's not. It wasn't like. The work was not that good. He just really liked my enthusiasm and like the fact that I, I tried to. It, it didn't look like fan art. It looked like I made it my own thing, but it was like applicable to Naughty Dog, you know. Yeah. Same thing with your stuff, man. I mean, all your stuff before The Last of Us looked like The Last of Us. <laughs> it was like 
cool cityscapes and like ruined highways and stuff. Yeah, there was something about it, you know. Um, right. I wasn't I wasn't aiming specifically for that. Funny story because um, uh, I I got to get an interview with Naughty Dog thanks to uh, to my friend uh, uh, Hanno, and uh, he was a he was a character uh, artist at the at the time. We we worked together at um, uh, at Crytek before, and um, and I remember him living to like he 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 was leaving to uh, Naughty Dog. And I was like. What the fuck is Naughty Dog? <laughs> yeah, like, is that a pet store? Everybody yeah, always asks is me that. Is that a pet store? What, what kind of company is that? Or do you so make I, I porn? didn't even know what Naughty Dog is. So, uh, and eventually, I think I, it was a time when I released uh, the work that I did for the canceled project over at uh, Crytek. Yeah. And I think it was just like a roll of a dice because he was looking at. I sent him a link. You know, hey, check it out. You know, this is what I what I've done. And he was looking at it, and I believe. Uh, there was either either Evan or Kristoff walking by, and like, who's that guy? Yeah. You know? So that's yeah, it's crazy, right? That's like yeah. everybody has some story like that, where like somebody walked by or like the right place at the right time, kind of thing. It's crazy. Yeah. So it's a uh, you know, as much as I could try and say, hey, like, um, I'm trying real hard and would love to get a job and, and everything. It's it's always going to be some kind of roll of a dice or some kind of you know lucky uh, situation that will lead you into that place. But the fact is, you're not going to be in that place unless you try in the first place. You know. Yeah. Well, unless it wouldn't you really get into this. So it wouldn't have happened to you if your art wasn't awesome first, though, because I'm sure he walked by ten thousand monitors with other art on it before he stopped and said, I'm "Who sure, was that?" Yeah. You know. Yeah, I don't consider it awesome, but. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I mean, it would be probably um, a little different situation if my art just really sucked because it just wouldn't <laughs> be picked up. So And he wouldn't even look <laughs> at it, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I remember you joined and you, you, you know, you were fucking already rocking it, you know, like you, you had, I think you were working on the Uncharted 3 cover. And speaking yeah. of Uncharted 2, I, I I haven't played the game until I go here to the United States, you know. So yeah, yeah. Um, I remember first time I because um, I, I I knew I knew it was like right after uh, Uncharted was released. Actually, that's when I started. Um, like I, I knew okay, this is the, this is what what they're all about, you know. So I started like looking. Okay, this is the company. This is what they do. Uh, it's fucking awesome, right? And I saw trailers for Uncharted 2, and like, holy fuck! <laughs> right, like <laughs> that looks really cool. Like they <clears> just <throat> straight up made an action movie video game. Yeah, and like I what? Was, I was like, what is this? You know, and and I was really curious, and it, it was just like, do I want to stay? Do I want to move? And you know, and the, I mean, after what I saw, it was like, yeah, I mean, come on, like you cannot pass on this opportunity, you know? Right. And, uh, and I now looked at the history and I saw, fuck, Crash Bandicoot, you know? Damn it. Dude, I that think was that my was my favorite the game. Yeah, that was like the first game I can remember playing, actually. Yeah, I, I remember playing so when I was in, uh, in the primary school with, with friends from the school. Like, we would go to uh, our friend's house and, and we would just play it there, you know? Because he, he, was, he was the only guy who actually had a PlayStation console. From, from the from the older friends I had. I, did, I didn't even know what it was. My brother got it for his birthday. Oh. I was like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, it's called a PlayStation. I was like, police station? What the hell does that police mean? Station? What is this, what's this like, gray thing? And we, it took us like three hours to set it up because we'd never seen the like red, white, and yellow cable <laughs> before. <laughs> it was so like just trying to get it to work. We would hear it, but we couldn't Damn. see it. And it was it only had like pinball. <laughs> that's that's awesome. so funny. Um, yeah, man. When when you started, man, it was it was like a a game changer for everyone. We were like, I mean, you didn't want to share with us anything, but I was always bugging you, like, how the fuck did you do that? And you're like, dude, whatever, just use brushes. I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> okay, what did you just do? Just uh, opening opening your PSDs when you weren't looking. <laughs> Drawing dicks on your screen. Oh yeah, that was a thing. Cla classic memories. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what kind of company you work for if you don't get a dick drawn on your drawing? Right. I would be offended if that yes. didn't happen. You know, <laughs> it's not right. 
to not have never right. You just multiple have to do dicks. It. If you but don't you, do it, then I you mean, know you should not work in video games. That's you as simple actually, as that. You actually were the Mache of dick drawings, though, because you <laughs> revolutionized it. You didn't just draw a dick, you, like, turned the painting into a composition of dicks. Like, you turned the, <laughs> the castle in the background into a dick made of little dicks. It was, like, next level. The, sh the clouds were dicks, the waterfall was jizz. It was, like, a whole other level. Hey, do you remember, do you remember when, uh, <laughs> when there was a big dick embedded in uh, mountain snow? <laughs> and you were painting on it and, and you, I think you've noticed like maybe a day after yeah the layer was just <laughs> and I just didn't notice you guys would hide them you'd hide it like 10 layers below so I'd never notice <laughs> so, Lassie. I remember that long time <laughs> sounds uh, like it <laughs> well, we were getting away with murder that's for sure Yeah. but kind of going back to the subject I don't want to lose track so my question was you had any struggles so obviously when you when you were joining uh you know uh video games and whatnot uh and joining naughty dog you, you, had, you had a different uh, idea of what this is you know but yeah like i'm curious because okay I, i'm sure you had struggles just to get to a point where you, you're actually you know consider yourself as a painter you know or, or, or an artist um everyone has those you know we we already I uh, had a chance to talk about those uh, on earlier uh, live streams. Yeah, you know, it's 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 everyone is uh, dealing with with issues like not issues but like um, how to how to put it in words. It's like you're scared of everything that you do because you're scared you're gonna fail. Of course, and granted, yeah. you fail so many times that you get. I, I believe you just become numb to it. Um, the problem is, in order to get to that point where you 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 just admit yourself to, or submit yourself to failure, um, is when you actually become a professional, you know. But before you get there, you actually have to um, overcome something else, which is a fear of failure. Because when you fail, it's you know it just it just happens, and and then. A lot of people just quit because they're like, ah, oh, it's not for me. You know, oh, I'm, I'm yeah, because who you have to have the mindset. Because who the hell, what kind of psychopath gets into an industry where you're like, oh, I'm the worst, but I'm gonna slowly climb it, like the ladder, one rung at a time, and I'm okay being sucky for like two years, and I'm just gonna keep going back to it and keep making terrible paintings. Like it's crazy. It's a trial by fire. Yeah. You just you just have to keep trying until you get like one like on Facebook and you're like, "Yes!" <laughs> oh my god, like one person. It's not like the worst thing I've ever done. It's it's really tough, man, to like get that get that fear out of you and just try and make something and, you know, just admit to yourself that like, "Oh, this is bad, but to get better, I have to do 100 more bad paintings probably." Yeah, man. Absolutely. That's how it is. It's just like <clears throat> you're, you, if you're not failing, you're you're not realizing uh, your mistakes, you know. Or if you, if you're not failing, you're not really knowing what what, what you're missing, you know. Because it's like, um, say you want to play basketball, right? Or you want to do any kinds of sports. That, what's uh, that? What is that? Basketball. Yeah. <laughs> is that a sport with a ball? <laughs> Sorry, re ball, really quick, guys. Whatever. We're gonna switch the presenter role to Mache. Okay. Uh, yeah, Eitan, if you wanna if you wanna paint something later or something, I know you had problems with your tablet, so I think it's broken. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I'll just you didn't wanna try the mouse? Um, that would be pretty <laughs> sick, but I think I have to restart to fix yeah. the tablet. It's too late for that. Did you get the invite? Yeah, I just need to accept. But yeah, man, uh, going with what you said, imagine coming straight from school, and then you're working with fucking Mache. Like, that's like a trial by fire. You're like, oh my god, you're like spending like three hours trying to make the grass work, and then Mache's making fucking Last of Us art, and you've never seen anything like that in your entire life. And then he's like, dude, it's easy, whatever, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just realized I really was like that. No, you were. We had to like coax you out of your shell and make you social. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. But I don't blame um, you. You know, you were born in a blown-out tank husk, so it's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Some, some proof in it. Sure. <laughs> uh, but have, about failure, 
have you ever uh i'm just curious have you ever just totally just failed at a freelance job you just get fired just did an awful job um not fired but i definitely were at the point where you know i would never hear from the client again yeah and i had i think i had it once but i what what i usually what happens is when i get to that point is i'm just so hard on myself you know like i just hate being that in that situation i think it's uh, un- unprofessional and it's not really what i where i want to be i don't, I don't want to be in a situation where you know someone is passing on on contacting me or, or working with me ever again because i just blew it the burning bridges yeah uh, and i'm sure i had situations where maybe i wasn't meeting expectations even though i was trying hard but it's just like i guess it just all depends on uh, situation, you know, uh, or a, a situation you're in specifically, or maybe what the project is, maybe there are changes to the project, but you know, you can always find excuses, but the, the truth of the matter is like, you should never be in that situation because what I'm learning with time is if you're putting, if you're, if you think you're putting hundred percent effort to what you do in reality, you're putting only 75% of the effort. Um, and in order to reach that hundred percent that is expected of you, you kind of want to push a little more you know right right um and so it's only gonna work uh for your um for you you know if you if you really put the effort into getting something even if it's the worst fucking job ever you know even if it's just the shittiest thing ever um you will eventually uh you know impress your clients or impress your your uh your you know your bosses or whoever you're working with you know um yeah i was definitely in situations like that where i was just like slacking real hard and um and i knew it i knew because I, I was like lacking motivation i guess that's right. the worst thing lacking motivation when you're at, when you're working fucking shittiest man it's just like you know you just have to get to that to that mood of uh really trying to overcome it and and you try your best even though it it really sucks you know because the the truth is you know maybe that one time you're working for a client maybe it's a shitty project but what if that person then works on say avatar or like other big film your dream project you know it can happen you know it can definitely happen so and then you might miss an opportunity because you just dropped the ball on that one thing you know and I'm 100% sure I had situations where I just dropped the ball, whether it was intentionally or not. It doesn't really matter anymore because it just happened. You know, I cannot control this anymore. Um, yeah, yeah. But I can I mean, only it... take lesson and say, okay, I don't want to do that anymore ever. And um, it's hard. You just have to push yourself really hard because um, otherwise, otherwise, who's going to push you? No one. Right. I mean, I, mean, I don't. I don't think I've ever been that situation either where I've like on purpose failed but uh, I've definitely had a situation where every single thing you turn in they're just like no 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 (laughs) don't like it no 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 and it's like it's stupid but with just without a tiny bit of positive encouragement from the people working on it it becomes like really easy not to care when when they're not like cool but it's not the right thing when they just say no I'm like god damn it (laughs) I hate this now. Yeah. They don't. E- they don't even care. They're just like, I don't like whatever. I mean, I mean, yeah. That's that's one that of the sucks. worst things. Um, but you know, you cannot control that. You have to realize that. And it's it took me time to realize that. You know, it's it's it's, it's funny because you, it should be your, in your professional conduct. But a lot of people don't realize the simple fact, and I think it's pretty apparent in video games, where everyone thinks they are the pinnacle of the company. <laughs> um, but they don't realize that they can get fired anytime, right? And and the reason they are there is to to create something that will help everyone else to get the product done, to get the sure. game finished and and ship. If you're not working towards that goal and you're working towards getting your portfolio out, okay, that's fine. You know, you you, you might get a you might land a better job because you you polished your portfolio or or whatever, you know, but it's a small industry so you might actually burn a lot of bridges that you don't even know about so 
Yeah, that was oh, another thing. Just starting at Naughty Dog was learning, you know, to grow that thick skin because those guys are ruthless, man. Like when when you send something out, and they're not trying to be mean; they're trying to make it, you know, work for the game. But I, yeah. you know, I, I was a, I was just a student who like happened to be in this place where everyone's like ten times better than me. And they're like, no, this doesn't work. The lighting's fucked. Your texture's shitty. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, oh god, like, stay strong. <laughs> wipe wipe the tears away. Get back to work. <laughs> like, it took a while before you're just you're like numb to it. You're just like, yeah, whatever you want, man. Cool. This sure. A hundred revisions. Awesome. Cool. Let's do it. <laughs> because you have to Sucks realize, though. like, yeah, but you have to realize, like, it's for the product it's not yes. it's not for you they're not like making fun of you or calling you stupid or whatever so if you there, there's a lot of people that have like really fragile egos and they they can't handle that kind of stuff yeah take it really personally when when that happens but you have to step back and realize like they just want a kick-ass game and your thing doesn't fit so just change it like whatever move on 100 percent. you know and it's 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 sad there's a lot of people that do have ego issues you know whether it's a concept art or or any other position you know and um they just i don't know there is something about this i'm a superstar here you know right uh, i don't know about that you know i'm just the more i work the more i learn that it's not really about that it's about something else um i was quoting a quote i don't remember i don't remember who said it i am pretty bad with names but uh, it's it's amazing how much you can achieve if you're not like if you're not taking credit for it or if you don't care who's to, who's gonna get credit for it, you know. Hmm. And I think that's that was true. Abraham Lincoln, right? In the no, Bible. it was I think something Harris or something. I don't remember. I, I I had it posted on my Facebook a while back. Um, I'll probably pick it up after the stream and maybe repost under uh, comments. But basically, what it means is you know. It's it's just that you know you're gonna be proud of the product uh, that you work on and and the, and the byproduct of that is going to be an amazing art because you're you do care and when you care when you're putting effort that's when when the shit starts to look really rad and people will not ask you to do 20 changes because now you don't you don't care if you do changes or not you care that it's supposed to look awesome and when it when that's happening then you know you can set yourself loose you're not gonna try hard to impress yourself or anyone else you're just gonna try hard to make the best asset or the best part for the game itself or for the for the film whatever you're working on sure. and people will, will see that effort when they see you you're trying really hard to get that effort for a product not for yourself they start to appreciate it you know and you could well not everyone obviously I mean you're gonna you know, still run the people that Feel like hmm, this asshole <laughs> right right um, but eventually you know I mean all of the all of the cards are going to be on your side when that happens so or you just give them what they want and then you do awesome personal painting when you go home <laughs> I mean that's an option too yeah. <laughs> you just you just compartmentalize and you're like sure whatever you want yeah. you want fish floating in the sky that's really cool okay great here you go <laughs> I mean yeah I mean, they want a fish floating in the sky that's what you're gonna give them but you're gonna make the fucking most badass fish right. that you, the, you, the world have ever seen exactly don't ever forget to make it awesome because that's your job yeah but, I mean but, okay so there's a, there's, there's, there's a part of making everything awesome where you just have to put the balance in and I uh, Hey man, it's supposed to be just a regular fish. <laughs> and just do the regular fish. But but make so it dope, but regular, but dope. I'm curious what what do you, what do you think was the biggest hurdle that you had to deal with in your career? Um, so like an attitude thing? Yeah, my own attitude, you know. It it, it evolved with time. Like I I became less and less um, obsessed about, you know, uh, protecting my own ego, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, but it just takes time. It's just like it's this this thing that is just horrible. It's a horrible thing to to tackle because at some point, I, like, I don't know. It's just like it's your it's your mind, it's your head. It's it's only in your head, 
And uh, unless you, you just decide to let it go and, and really get to that mindset that you can complete, complete much more and get much better if you're just willing to let it go, you know? Mm-hmm. Because what's, ha- what's, ha- what's happening? Like, there's a fear of if you don't let it go, you know, like if you just, if you just hold it only for you, then it's like, yeah, like I have my secrets, like people will not take my job, you know? But that's, that's stopping you from progressing. That's stopping you from getting further with your um, with your skills or career, you know. But you know what I, I know. realized that that actually the opposite has been true. Like when I show students or I show my friends a a technique I figured out or a tool, they go off and they figure something else out. Yeah. They come exactly. back and they're like, "Hey, did you know about so and so?" And I was like, "You asshole." What? what like what is that how did you do that and then because you showed them they're like oh of course here just have it you want my whatever you want my file have it yeah so it actually they kind of like do the work for you if you start (laughs) sharing your techniques because someone will come up with some better way to do it probably yeah i mean you're never going to be the best uh, at everything that you do there's always like you just have to realize that fact that sometimes you're just gonna be better at one thing and someone else is gonna be better at the other thing. And once sure. you accept it, then uh, you can let it go and and just uh, you know and go with it. I I 100% agree. Like I, I had that that many times, you know, where I would just figure out something and then hey, like check it out. And then that person would come back and say, did you did you know about this? Exactly as you're saying. Like did you yeah. know about this? Like what? <laughs> it, it's not even like. What did you do? <laughs> It's not even so much about making the painting for me. Like my favorite thing I found is just experimenting. Like yeah. I'll just I'll just start twenty paintings. I'll never finish them, but I'll just try something weird out, and then it yeah it just gets this conversation going. Especially yeah. with uh with teaching now, you know I have like ten students who all go away with the information and then tell me some stuff I never knew, and it totally helps my workflow. And I'm like oh. They're like, did you know you could do this in Moto? And I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, I totally knew that. Obviously, uh, <laughs> in, in my head, I'm like, I hate you, I hate you. <laughs> no, that's true, man. Like when you when you teach, that's what happens. That's exactly what happens. You get your students are getting better than you, and that's awesome because then you you learn from them as well. So it's like a collaborative process. But it's also make you like it. it I don't know there's something about seeing what students can come up with after working with you and then just taking it there to their own realm and creating their own stuff you know yeah there's something really gratifying because then you know like man like this this effort was really worth it you know sure like i'm not wasting time here this is not like a wasted effort where yeah you get it back yeah exactly so that's really rewarding to see like that's why i like I love sharing students' work, even if it's not the best work in the world. But I see the progress, you know. And yeah. when I see the progress, I always gonna share it, no matter how it looks, because I, I just I just admire and appreciate the, the effort, and I appreciate the fact that they're you know, because I was there as well. Like my work maybe wasn't the, the best in the world. I mean, when you start, you're pretty much a shitty person and a shitty artist. <laughs> you and should you feel bad about time. it. <laughs> yeah, and you and you. <laughs> You should feel you should feel bad about it to a point where you want to make progress, but not bad about it because, and then you want to quit. That's right. the wrong approach, you know. So yeah, actually, some of my worst students when I started are now my best. Yeah, it's insane. It's crazy because they just they were the most curious, they had the most passion, the most drive, and it's so cool to just take someone's thing, and it's like. It's not yours, but you're just like pushing it along, and you're like, no, 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 yeah. like, do this. What if you, if you did that, it would be ten percent better. This, this, and that, and then you, it's kind of this weird collaboration. Like I'm just saying stuff, but it, they get so much better. It's so cool to see that happen. Yeah, I agree. No, it's good, man. Like I, that's that's the one part I really love about it. You know, just seeing, just seeing progression. Um, I've, I guess the most gratifying is when you know that. Your effort not only made someone art someone's art better, but also like got them a job or something, you know. 
so cool yeah for sure it's like yeah you get you, you get your ego app huh? <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, yeah you know man. you know sung Choi, right yeah i know him yeah, yeah like i, I can't take lab. i can't take any credit for that but he was my student and that was like that was insane to see that happen but he yeah, was always, he his, was always his good <laughs> earlier earlier works and you know seeing what he does now is like damn son Damn, Sung. Damn, Sung. Sung. You always said With the that G. in class. <laughs> With the G, really? Yes, damn, Sung. It's funny. There's there's a lot of questions if you guys uh, are ready for them. Yeah, you want to jump on this? Hell yeah. Yeah. All right. First one says, uh, will you be joining the Learn Squared as an instructor, Ethan? Oh, this is awkward. No. <laughs> Uh, Negative. Uh, no. Mach <laughs> Maché? No. Am I joining Learn Squared? <laughs> yeah, awkward. Um, I don't know. I thought you were crunching. I am crunching. That would be dope, though. <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Um... Thanks, thanks for getting me fired. Do yeah. <laughs> you, you do gumroads, right? Gumroads are awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was the next question. It was gumroads. Where's the next one? Oh, man. It hasn't happened yet. Nice. <laughs> uh, I I really want to go back. I have a lot of ideas for new gum roads going back into compositional stuff and like basic stuff, but just my uh, my theories and thoughts on things rather than like a a full blown like technique painting because I feel like I I don't have any more to show on that. Like I kind of did everything that I know how to do, but. I would love to do like an in-depth uh, Gumroad on composition, and I might do my own online class, not with Learn Squared, obviously. <laughs> yeah, fuck those my, guys. Yeah, those guys are stupid. Whatever. <clears throat> uh, the next question says, "What is your guys' take on learning just from online classes, such as Learn Squared, Nomen, CGMA, and others, as alternative to attending a four-year university?" Um. I'll, I'll let Mache answer after. I'm sure he has a different opinion on this, but I think it for sure depends on how you learn. And I I didn't know that I couldn't learn on my own until I got to school, and I realized that I really needed like four or five people to compete with to push me further. Because right. uh, I just I wouldn't have tried as hard if if you know if if you're like the best kid in class you don't try but when you're the worst kid in class you're like oh hell yeah like this is gonna be awesome I'm, I'm gonna learn so much from these people and uh, I just I needed the structure of a school but I think the online classes are so cool and I'm I wish I had that when I went to school that sounds so awesome like it's all at your fingertips now it's so accessible it's so freaking cheap it's it's awesome but if you need the structure go to school but if you don't have 120 grand to blow definitely just go to the small schools go to like CDA and take some learn squared classes <laughs> what do you think Mache? some brown nosing here I mean, I've, <laughs> I've heard <laughs> I've heard they have some okay instructors just okay um, so no I mean I 100% I agree with you in, in a lot of cases um, I'm personally self-taught, you know, so for me, it's the obvious choice is like if you really focus on, on what you want to do, then you will find your way, you know, you will find, okay, um, I need to do this to achieve that, you know. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is relying on everyone else to help you and not doing any, any work for yourself because that I see that happening quite a lot, frankly, and I'm trying to discourage that myself, you know, like go out there, figure it out yourself, you know, like ask when, questions. When, yeah. Yeah. Always ask questions. That's, that's, that's fine. But you know, when, when I hear question and I'm not pointing out or anything, but I, I, I do hear questions like, Hey, um, how do you use brushes in Photoshop? You know, if, if you have a question like that, which you could, which takes five minutes to Google, you know, then you're asking the wrong questions, but <laughs> but it might be also you know it's a matter of perspective too because what I've learning what I'm learning also is a lot of things that I assume 
or I always assumed before, uh, were wrong. And it, it took me someone to uh, to answer it, Google it yourself, you know, <laughs> to right, realize right. that I have to Google it myself. Because I do know, ask stupid questions too, even even now, you know? Of course. I taught you how to use Maya at work, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and then I yeah, realized but... the shitty sock. I'm joking. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> It's tough though, because when you start out, you don't even know what you don't know. You don't yes, even know point, what's so. out there. So you're like, you're literally googing, go <laughs> googing, googing. You're, you're googling how to paint in Photoshop because you don't even know like what the basics are, you know? Because it, yeah. it can be tough. And then, yeah, I don't, I don't get too mad when I see questions like that because I, I totally oh, was yeah. there. It's not like being mad. It's just like, okay. I mean, no, you're mad. Don't lie, man. <sighs> <laughs> oh, I'm about to break that table. <laughs> um, no, I agree. I mean, all right. So you said it. You said it perfectly. If you have a lot of money to blow, you know, then, then sure, then uh, then then do it because it's gonna be easier. You're gonna get a guidance uh, from professionals, and then it's just gonna be much easier for you to to go to go through it. You know, but not everyone has money. You know, sure. So like a lot of people don't have money and. You, then you have to face yourself with choices. If you just want to go to the to the art school, to any random art school, I would say don't do it. Look at the instructors that are teaching in that school. If those instructors work in the industry, they already have high positions, you know? Then you, you know at least the quality bar that you're going to be getting is, um, is, is high enough from, like they will have much better expectations, much more expectations from you than uh, someone who never worked in the industry or maybe worked on not enough, you know, or maybe it's just a, this kind of artist that I, I got my first job and I feel I made it so I don't give a fuck about uh, progressing anymore, you know? Right. Is, then don't, don't go to that school. If, if your teacher teacher's artwork is worse than an average work that you can find <laughs> on, on, on art station, you're making mistakes pay paying money to that teacher, and I, you know, as sad as it sounds, it's, it's absolutely true. And um, because, especially like those larger uh, colleges, you know, th those bigger schools, um, it's just like if you're about to pay, like it's different when you when it's again, it's different when when you're paying for Gumroads, or it's different when you're signing up for a CGMA or any schools like that, right? Because you. The money you're paying for for the courses you're getting, it's worth it. You know, of course, it's, yeah, it's of it's course a fraction. Worth it. it's, it's a, it's a fraction. fraction of a cost. Yeah. Whereas when you sign up for an actual college, you know you're gonna be in debt for one hundred twenty thousand dollars. You know, easily. And yep. the question is, is that one hundred twenty thousand dollars will pay or not? If after that you're not getting jobs because your work and and quality of your work sucks. I mean, what can you do? Then you're gonna have to learn somewhere else, you know. You know, it's it's about your attitude, though, because yeah, of course, I, always. I I didn't come from money. I knew I kind of needed to go to art school, and I was like, I'm going to get a job or I'm going to die in debt. <laughs> it was that like I needed to be passionate. I had to get obsessed about it, and it kind of, you know. It doesn't matter because as long as your attitude is like I'm gonna absorb every ounce of knowledge I'm gonna get super obsessed I'm gonna do like double the homework that my teachers ask for because there were like plenty of kids that were in the same exact programs the same exact classes as mm -hmm. me that are working at fucking hot topic and it's cuz they just expected like oh I'm at school I'm in the right classes I'm just gonna get a job like obviously I'm gonna work at Pixar or, oh yeah like whatever yeah, and they never fucking way, tried. They just had no no passion, no drive, and they didn't even they weren't even in the industry yet, and they already seemed like they were burnt out. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, you don't want that for sure. So yeah, yeah if, you're, if, if you're... you got the right attitude, man, like there's people in. I mean, Maché came from who knows where. We don't know yet. <laughs> uh, some wasteland called Poland, and he came out here just because he was super obsessed with it. He got really into it, so it wasn't a wasteland, but you know. <laughs> I don't know, man. No, the background, the background is like from what I'm coming from. You know, in Poland or any other, you know, Eastern European countries, 
it's a matter of what's your background really you know you might be having a really good background or you might be coming from a really shitty one really poor families and whatnot so again it's the drive as you said it's the drive and effort and the passion you have to be obsessed and if you're not obsessed then it's maybe not for you because if you're not obsessed and you're gonna do half of the job there's going to be someone who's obsessed and who, who he will do double the job which means four times more than you and he'll he'll be the first to get actual work he'll be the first to to take money that you're you're looking for you know i can't i can't even tell you how many uh kids in school would like play starcraft instead of doing homework and then they would complain that the teachers at the school sucked like, yeah like they're like that school was such a scam man like i didn't learn anything it's like yeah you didn't do your fucking homework <laughs> i guess it's also you know it's also how you were brought up you know as a person and what kind of environment you're in if you if you're all your friends are just playing games and just you know not giving shit about you know being passionate about something or having that drive that you're talking about and of course you're not going to be you know you're not going to be uh having that motivation yourself you know so yeah i mean i always tell people uh john sweeney's story right like he graduated school and his portfolio sucked and then he locked himself inside for like two months i think that was it like he took uh some some CDA classes, I think, and he just mm -hmm. worked on his portfolio for like two months, and then he got into Naughty Dog, from like unhirable to I sent his work out. And Dude, like, I remember. Who is this kid? Who is this kid? Get him right now. I remember uh, when Shaddy was sending me uh, John's work, and like, look at that kid. Uh, he's learning, and I was like, man, that work sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, when I was coming back to Naughty Dog, it's like, oh, this guy Hello, was working John. here. Yeah. And I saw, like, I looked at his work again. I was like, damn, dude. It, that's that's what it's about, you know? It didn't take much, man. I just, I sat down with him one day, and I just, like, told him all the tools to use. And I was like, yeah, Mache uses this thing called channels. And then his eyes, like, lit up. And then, <laughs> and then he just, he turns in the best art test that Naughty Dog's ever seen. It's yeah. insane. In, like, two or three months, probably. So it's totally possible. It's just about your attitude. Yeah, the amount of work you're gonna put into like, something. He just didn't sleep for three months because he wanted it that bad. So yeah. if you don't like play video games when you have a job, don't 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 waste your time if you're still looking for a job. Yeah, because otherwise you're never gonna get there. So because someone someone else will not play those video games but do the actual right. homework, and you know put it put himself out there, get get you know get that extra done things done and. You're gonna be the one who's who's regretting it, you know? Yeah. So hundred percent. Alright, what's the next question? Yeah, the next question says what would you or would you recommend studying uh, studying works from great artists, not for the purpose of copying them, but to develop an understanding of their techniques? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yes. 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 Firm firm yes. Do it. I mean does anyone you're, say um, not to do that? Weren't your um, weren't your uh, paintings from like cowboys uh, inspired by um, what's his uh, Bill Anton? Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's another thing I didn't mention was like what what I really liked was like outside of concept art helped influence my concept art, like because I I really love traveling and I love like nature and natural color palettes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, and doing paintings out, outdoors, like going outside, I know, it's crazy. But like seeing the sun and looking at it and understanding what's happening with the colors can give you like these amazing color palettes that you're never gonna get from just studying photos, like copying photos, it doesn't really do anything. But yeah, like going outside, looking at like awesome master paintings, like I love, like you were saying, Bill Anton, all those like American Western painters, all the Orientalists, like, that is like it's just concept art it's just done in oil it's so cool looking yeah so and then then that puts a unique spin on you because you're not just painting like the same thing that everyone else is painting you went outside the normal concept art tropes and you're like oh okay 
this guy just did a bunch of cowboys hanging out by a fire. Like, that's cool. I didn't know we were allowed to do that. <laughs> There's no mechs or chicks or guns. It, so. <laughs> yeah. Chicks or guns. It has to be mechs and chicks and guns. Know, you didn't know that? Know. I've never done either of those things, but <laughs> I, heard, I heard that's the thing you have to do. Yeah, dude. It's, uh, without that, you're not a complete concept artist. So. Yeah, I, I feel empty inside. Mm. <laughs> you should. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Next question says, "How about picking good color choice?" That's for Eaton. Um, good color choice. Yeah. So, like what I was saying before, I say pick it by understanding what is actually happening by going and looking at a sunset, and because photos of sunsets are like useless, but actually going outside and just taking notes even just walking around you don't even have to paint but just walking around and saying like oh what color is the shadow right now and what color is the light that's interesting what's happening with the clouds right now so um i i'm always stressing like choose start with a very naturalistic color palette and then you can exaggerate it depending on the mood but keep it realistic you know because there's there's so many there's so many images out there where I look at it and I'm like man has this guy ever been outside like does he <laughs> does he know what sunlight looks like this is insane um, yeah, yeah just pick the color palette that suits the mood but go outside and paint that's like the best way to learn color in order to get a photography to even remotely look like what it is in real life it's it, it's a craft as its own you know right when you look at um, when you look at, uh, let's say, uh, National Geographic's photos, or when you look at, you know, a lot of photos of, over the internet, a lot of them are just so heavily post-processed in terms of like the added color and right, right, and all that stuff. It's just, it's never in the nature. It just never looks like that, you know. But yeah, I think, <laughs> I think what's super cool and not too many people do it that is, do like a plein air painting with a cool lighting scenario but then use that later for concept because you've just come up with a completely original lighting scenario that no yeah. one's ever seen like you come up with you go out there and, and some weird shit's happening with the clouds or something and it's creating some weird pools of light or something like every time I go out I see something I've never seen before and just taking any one of those and applying it to a concept will automatically make it stand out because yeah. it's just so unique and different and it, it looks really well informed. It looks correct because you saw it with your own eyeballs. 100%. Good info. Uh, if you guys want to end um, around 10 or 10.30, what are you looking for, Jay? Around 10, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have a lot I'll more questions. I'll talk forever, man, so whenever you guys want to quit. We have about 15 more questions, so let's try to, try to rush let's through each it. of these, yeah? Yeah. All right. So the next question says, at the workshop he did in Santa Monica, this is, uh, I believe, with Aiton. Uh, it says with Shadi, uh, you, you told us how long it took to finish his forest giant piece, and his question is, how similar does a finished piece look compared to what he planned in the beginning, or? Or does his painting usually end up drastically different from what he originally had in mind? Um, so he's asking if if my paintings generally evolve a lot. Yes. During during the process, mm -hmm. um, usually not. Like usually, I, I kind of do what Maché's doing, where I'll rough in a sketch first, and then I'll. I really like nailing the composition before I do anything. So the the forest giant piece changed a lot because I didn't do a sketch and that was that was my bad. But generally, they don't change too much because I I try and get all that stuff out of the way. The just the planning, the staging of it, so that I could just focus and turn my brain off and just make a pretty picture, not worry like, oh, is it unbalanced now? Do I need this and that and that? They usually usually are staying the same. Cool. The next question for you it says, "How much, uh, how much of your work uh, in Naughty Dog influences or influenced each other? Influenced each other? 
Have you learned something specific from each other? I think it's comparing Machay and it's both yeah, of us. I, mean, yeah. I think I think all of us, like the whole concept crew, is just like a learning fest over there because we all sit right next to each other. We're all kind of isolated, so every time you do something cool, someone comes by, and they're like, "What? What did you do?" Unless you're Marek, and then he's like, "What did you do?" <laughs> For the different. love of God. <laughs> Which is a very different <laughs> What did you do? He's like, you fucked it up. Oh my god. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> he he was yeah. pretty ruthless with that. But I think yeah, we we totally I don't I don't think our work styles look the same. I can always tell who did what painting, but I think we kinda all got on the same train of like we like our tastes kinda became similar where we really liked natural light and beautiful color palettes and like we started using the same kind of techniques and see because we just did whatever Mache did we just followed him into battle he would lead the way in the oh, first no, wave <laughs> Sick. but uh yeah i mean we all just you know we use photos in 3d and try to make it look awesome so we all share techniques <laughs> on that yeah we we always was like like Oh man, did you did you see this new thing? And like right. everyone's looking over, like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Like what is going on there? Right. Yeah, that was a really great dynamic. So I really enjoyed that. That was one I of did... the biggest biggest uh, parts that I've enjoyed. You know, working with you all, all you guys. You know, that the team that was there. You know, you, John, Nick, and um, and uh, that other guy. Yeah, that other guy. Aaron. <laughs> Did and you forget Aaron. his name? <laughs> I forgot his name, man. <laughs> I forgot his name. Um, but yeah, I think... It, it must like, be his maybe, pecs, you know? Yeah, his beautiful face. <laughs> his beautiful pecs. I, I guess, like, a takeaway for the person asking that question is build a community for yourself of... Because everyone's on Facebook, basically. So find people that are at your skill level or around your skill level... And even if you don't live in the same country or on the same side of the planet, like start a chat where you guys are all sending each other, you know, your works in progress or some experiments that you're figuring out and you, you'll all elevate each other because you'll start competing. Not in, in a friendly way, you'll all just be like, whoa, shit, I want to make my painting look as cool as his and you guys will all grow. It's, it's really powerful to do that and not just, you know, be alone and never share your secrets like Mache. <laughs> Hey, this is my redemption now, so... I know, I know, I know. <laughs> 2006 Mache, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Next question for you says, how do you stay true to your original idea? And how do you uh, how do you extract the message you are trying to send and stay true to it throughout the process? Any tips on how to clearly state your idea and move forward uh, the right way? I think... Uh... I think it all goes from the beginning. So like whatever your your idea is, if you can distill it down into one word, right? Like the one takeaway you want people to have when looking at your painting, right? So like danger or like majesty or epic or whatever that one word is. And then every single thing has to come from that decision. So your color palette, your composition all has to reinforce, okay, it's dangerous. So the staging of everything needs to say that it's dangerous. The shapes, the composition, the lighting all have to re reinforce that idea that the, the painting is showing a dangerous place. And every little thing you add has to stick to that or uh, or you start getting out of whack, you know? If that makes any sense. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense? <laughs> <laughs> no, it makes sense. I'm just, I'm just playing. I mean, like, um, you're painting right now, right? Like, it's just, it's epic. So you're not going to all of a sudden add a fucking spaceship on top of the rocks. Cause it's, dude, it's a, it's that's about... actually a great idea. <laughs> Do it. It's, it's about epic rocks. <laughs> Done. Even a spaceship wouldn't really take away from that. But still. Like, dude. your color palette is an adventurous color palette, and your shapes are cool and <laughs> exciting, right? So you're not going to do anything to like take away the essence of that word epic epic majesty yeah. that spaceship though 
That spaceship. <laughs> that spaceship. Next question says, how do you avoid burnout when you're working a nine-hour job and come home and want to spend time working on personal projects uh, slash improving? That's a real, like, I want to know the answer to that. I don't, I don't know. But what, I, what I've been trying to do lately is just do a scribble every day for me, even if, it, if it's just like a little comp little sketch or something that I'll just throw into a folder just so I can like have one thing that I did that day that was mine and and sometimes they become they get really exciting and then I actually like I really want to go home and work on it but sometimes you don't and that's okay too sometimes you just want to come home and go to sleep because you're creatively exhausted but uh yes yeah, it's, it's hard how do you stay inspired man Jay um, I just, you know, because I'm a very social creature. Right. Uh, I just decided that I'm just going to continue being very social mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with myself. Dude, they know you at all the clubs around here. <laughs> um, no, I mean, to stay inspired, it's, it's the hardest thing to do because you're always going to be self-doubting and you're always going to be finding that, you know, you're really tired of doing this one thing. Or you coming back from work? I remember I was working for recently uh, for Captain America: The Civil War, and I would literally, you know, leave my house at seven, eight in the morning, you know, and then get back around eight and nine because of the traffic and everything. So it's yeah. just like over twelve hours. It's just like you're just exhausted, you know, because not only you're working your fullest at the studio. Because it's film and it's really demanding, but then like, what do you do? You know, like you're also yeah, I mean, like in like, traffic all the time. So right. what what I would what I would what I would do is I would try to figure out. I always I always felt about it, about it this way. Uh, I can either try to force myself to sketch something or test out an an, an idea, or I could just do nothing or maybe go to sleep, you know? I don't sleep too much, generally. I probably should sleep way more than I do, to be honest. But um, I usually pick the first option, you know? Just try something new. There is something about when you're really obsessed about art, when you're really obsessed about what you do, It's not you're not treating it as just a job. Uh, you always find something that is really inspiring to you, you know, whether it's a new plugin that you just figure it out is out there and you just really want to try it or um some kind of i don't know maybe you you you, will, you just go through your old uh, paintings you know and then you you find that the one that oh damn like i would really nice would be really nice to finish it you know or you start your own personal project when you start your own personal project what's happened is um you can set up yourself uh, deadlines you know and once you have deadlines then it's kind of putting yourself at, at work again so maybe because you're already working so much, your brain will register it differently and then force you to kind of do it, you know? Um, also one thing that really helps me, because here's, here's one thing. When you work and you do all, your, all the things and chores during the day, you'll find yourself lacking time. And that's, that's one of the main reasons that I, that I hear from people. Like, I, don't, I just don't have time to do this and that, you know? But then I look at, I don't know, look at people like, I don't know, it's, it's maybe an extreme example, but uh, Richard Branson, you know, the, the guy who created Virgin. He's having like, how many, 200 companies, and he's always doing something, right? Right. And in, in essence, it should be, his, his day is 48 hours, right? Still has yeah. time for family, still has time for fun. But or they hate him. We don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but here's 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 what really makes uh, I, I'm guessing like what really makes uh, your day better is when you organize yourself. When you don't just go wild, just out there like oh I'm just gonna do this and maybe that, and you don't really think about what you're doing. Once you start organizing yourself, uh, you'll find out that you're probably wasting about two or three hours out of a day on doing really stupid shit. You know. Like what are just going on Facebook constantly and checking if there is a new post that it's just you might have missed that one more important information from your friend and just there's nothing there and just you get lured in 
by the amount of just stuff that is in there, you know, or cat pictures or anything like that. So I started doing lists. I actually got list the idea to do lists uh, from um, from Ash, and uh, and John can can confirm he started doing the list too. Yes, yeah, sir. It just changes your <laughs> life, man. It's just literally you find out like how on earth I have so much time in my hands, you know. And it, the list is simple. You just break down your day into what are you gonna do exactly at what time. And then you set, set yourself alarms. And once you set yourself alarms, like five minutes before that task ends, you know you have to finish this, that task, you know? And if it's uh, like really important work, that's a cue for you that you've been probably fucking around too much and you didn't finish on time. And, and then you, find, you try to find those cues. You try to find where exactly did I screw it up? Why am I not completing this on time? Maybe it's a wrong estimation of time. Maybe I, I was supposed to do more hours than this to complete it in the right way, you know? And you just find yourself those those things that work for or against you. And once you start doing that, you will notice that you're wasting a lot of time during the day. Because I started doing a list and I, I found two hours in a day. Yeah, I think I think uh, the the combination of lists and timing yourself is probably the best thing. It's like you know, it's it's great. It keeps you on task and it's just it makes you more aware. You know. Yeah, the so. idea for it, I think uh, I think it was Vitali who um, who basically uh, inspired uh, Ash to do it, and then Ash was like, "Dude, you gotta do it, man! Stop being a pussy, <laughs> just do it." <laughs> um, and I, you know, I can only be thankful because it really changes everything. Um, and it's not like a, just one thing that will that'll do everything for you. Obviously, there is a lot of other things that you have to take into consideration, but doing lists definitely helps. So, Yeah, I think like even just stealing away just some time just once a day to do something for you will help you not burn out also just like... yeah. A little scribble, it'll start getting you excited again because you're giving all your creative energy to work. But if you just put five or ten minutes away a day to just do a little doodle, it might turn into something. And you can always, if you really like it, you'll go work on it. You'll want to work on it after work or you'll want to work it on the weekends. But And also, I don't know, you know, you're human, so sometimes you don't want to work. So just <laughs> don't work. It's okay. No, you have to. <laughs> All right, fine. No, yeah. Every day. <laughs> so we have about seven more questions. Uh, Let's do, it. Let's do two keep more. Going. We got two more. Yep. All right. Uh, so let, the next question says, Ethan, uh, did you use a 3D, uh, 3D for the that ice rock? And he's talking about that last painting that was showed before yes, we switched screen. I did. Do you want to switch screens to me? Yeah, uh, we could. Yeah. Just take yeah. a second. You ready? I'm going to send you that. Let me hide my porn. Okay, go. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You mean right. a meat spin? <laughs> I just have it on for hours. Just All right, let me know in the if you guys can see it. Yeah, go ahead. I see it. Okay, cool. So, so yeah, I used uh, some 3D for this. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Damn you, that painting though. <laughs> <laughs> that one was hard. But this is the sort of thing, like, I just. I would probably work on this like five minutes a day. It took like forever. But yeah, so that was my little scribble that got me excited. It's so stupid. It's like so. Who knows what? I was like, oh, that would be cool. I just had an idea about that. But this is, yeah, the 3D render. So I try and get the, the renders to look like 80% of what I want it to look like. Get get the juicy light and the reflections and the composition. Because I, I really don't like making huge changes like three quarters through the painting. You know, it's like the worst to start over like that. Hmm. Don't you think? Isn't that the worst? <laughs> Starting over or realizing like making it sucks. The, yeah you're like oh wait the composition doesn't make sense yeah you kind of have to sketch it out first that's yeah know. so 
it was just just the tr same old tried and true method. So using the 3D for your lighting cue and then finding photos and mixing paint in there, scribbling ideas. Yeah. Starting to get the boats in there, finding awesome reference. Look at this, a guy in Viking, in Viking costume in a boat from the right angle <laughs> in the middle of rowing. That took Perfect. like four hours just to find that one. Yeah. Just what lots do you mean, of you didn't paint it? I know, I know. You know how much I like painting characters. I know you love it. Yeah. You're <laughs> telling me all the time. Yes. <laughs> But yes, I, I I use 3D a lot. If if I can do it with just starting with a photo, I will. But I would say like 80% of the time now, I'm I'm using a 3D base to start with. Yeah. Awesome. The last yeah. question for you guys says: Can you say how generally uh, what your Basically, generally, what your look, your workflow looks like. Um, are you? Do you start with a sketch, three D? You already talked a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, so it's I do a sketch, and then I decide based on the sketch if I can solve it with photos and paint, or if I need to use three D. If it's a perspective heavy thing, or if I want really specific lighting, I'll use three D. It it depends, but then it's the same thing after that it's just painting back and forth with photos yeah. and brushes one thing I've, I I know that happens is you know because in production whether it's video games especially in films we really have to do something really fast you rely on photos quite a lot you know <clears throat> and, yeah and um, I had a period of time where I would just work that way because there was so much work you know and then realize that damn I'm forgetting how to paint <laughs> yeah. yeah it happens but you know yeah. it's just at the end of the day you're just trying to push a product right you're like yeah. you're you're meeting a deadline you're doing a thing for something that's probably going to be in 3D anyway so mm -hmm. why not start with that why not make yeah. it look as close to the finished product as possible why yeah, I, I, mean, I, I don't know I don't you're not yeah. making a gallery masterpiece. Stop. Exactly. Stop trying to prove to yourself and to others. Just like, just make a cool thing. That's what you're hired for. Yeah. Awesome. It's different than illustration, for sure. Yeah, that's the biggest right. change, actually. If you think about it, illustration and concept art. Illustration is right. supposed to look amazing, and that's where you're gonna shine doing those brush strokes, those juicy brush strokes, those man. Those juicy <laughs> strokes. But if you're doing concept art, it doesn't matter how it looks. So obviously, the looks will sell it to people that are not maybe well versed in in understanding art sure but if you work let's say you work only with the art director uh, an art director can can tell whether you can do the work or not for him it doesn't matter if it's gonna look shitty as a sketch or not it matters what the idea is you know right and if you really want to go paint then just go outside and go paint huh? don't don't do concept art yep <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome guys cool. well, thanks for joining us Aiton yeah thanks for having me thanks for everyone tuning in and watching this you guys are awesome yeah and if you guys didn't get your uh, questions answered uh, there's always next time when Aiton joins us you can yeah. join oh, us again part two <laughs> Dude, Aiton, how about doing it again? Just, just start a sketch maybe next time <laughs> yeah maybe my, he was just staying in the whole time maybe my Cintiq won't die oh, next boy. time <laughs> Um, yeah, I would love to come back and, and do a sketch cool. to, we'll prove, organize it. to prove to myself that I'm an artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mad respect, man. Cool, dude. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks for, thanks thanks, for uh, finding time for this. And everyone who tuned in, you guys are awesome, obviously. So you guys are the best. Just keep showing up. Just make Papa proud. <laughs> <laughs> Papa. Papa. Uh, joking. <laughs> no, it's awesome. It's... You're our concept dad. <laughs> no, it's I I just love doing it, you know. Not only because it's an opportunity to talk with people and catch up with friends and maybe talk to new people that I've never talked with before, but also just to hang out and do cool shit, you know. And, yeah, hopefully... and inspire everyone else. If this is inspiring, if, if there's only one person from the whole stream that's like, shh. 
shit. <laughs> like, I, I want to do a painting. That's awesome. That's, all, that's right. all I ask for, you know? Just yeah. one person being inspired. One, and... one takeaway. As long as yeah. you're left with one takeaway, we did our job. Yep. That's awesome. 100% true. So, cool, dude. Thanks for, right. uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for everyone coming, too. So, uh, those who are asking, this is going to be available right after this stream ends. So, Yes. Sweet. Sweet. Yes, sir. All right. All see right. you guys next time. All Peace. right. Peace out. So we it should be live now, I guess. I think. Are we, though? <laughs> yeah. we're hey, live. everyone. Oh, I'll just keep talking then. And if we're not live, then... We're live. We're live. <laughs> we are. Perfect. Uh, it's uh, episode 19, I guess. It's, time is flying by real quick. So uh, in this episode, we have Ni Nadia Mogilev and hey, Jama Jama Jurbaev. Hey, guys. 